What's going on guys? This is Anthony. I film a lot of fishing content from uh, just recreationally tournaments. The number one question I get asked is how do I get fishing sponsorships? What do I do? Who do I contact? What brand should I go after? So today I got Brad Turnbloom here. He goes by the uh, handle BRAD Outdoors. That's right. You are ranked what in the world? Number eight. Number eight in the world for freestyle jet skiing, doing the crazy stuff that I can't do. So he is getting into tournament fishing. You've bass fished for how many years? Probably about six years or so. Six years. Yeah. And he's made the decision that he's gonna go all in and he is looking for sponsorships. That's right. So do you know why you want sponsorships? Yeah, so basically, you know, I've been fishing for around six years now. I've been working on my techniques and getting better. And really what I'm trying to do is kind of build my personal reputation, my YouTube channel. And I want to get into tournament fishing. And my thought is that if I can bring in sponsorships, it's going to help me pay exposure, for exposure, exposure one. And then two also is going to be cost cost helping me pay for these things. So, you know, okay. obviously rods and reels get expensive, all the gear tackle. If I can get someone to help me augment that cost a little bit and bring it down, then the whole idea of tournament fishing becomes a little easier. Sure. Sure. So I get asked a bunch and this is the brutal reality of it. You going to a company, you got to have something to bring to the table, right? Of course. Whether it be, I can make you short form content. I can do this for you. I can do that. Um, it takes a little bit of, um, you got to be articulate, mm -hmm. you know, with how you speak. You don't necessarily Absolutely. need to have this amazing resume. You don't have to be the best fisherman. Sure. But you have to bring something to the table. And um, I watched a podcast recently. I think I might have sent it to you, actually. The Bilge with Chris Aldane and Trey Aldane. That's right. And she goes on to say, you know, there's no money in fishing and West Coast fishing is dead and this and that. Don't quote me on that, but <laughs> paraphrasing. And she said that there's more money made on the business side than the actual fishing side nowadays. Makes sense. So, like I said, you have to bring something to the table and you have to pick the brands that you're going to approach very strategically. So, for example, what is your favorite fishing brand? What do you use the most of right now? Uh, probably have Luz and Dobbins. I'd say Luz Reels, Dobbins, Dobbins Rods. And Luz. That's what I've been using, not because I necessarily think it's the best. It's just what I've ended up with. I haven't bought any of the real high-end stuff. Are you... I mean, Luz and Dobbins, they both make high-end stuff. So, are you happy using Luz and Dobbins? Yeah, so far. But no, I, no like problems. I said, it's, it's mid-level stuff of theirs, but absolutely, I love it. Okay, so yeah, hypothetically speaking, let's say you wanted to go after Luz. Mm -hmm. Luz is a big company. It's a big box company. Sure. yeah, of course. You are a nobody to them. Yep. I mean, realistically, you are a nobody. <laughs> I'm a nobody to them. I mean, there's a lot of people that are just nobodies to Luz. Um, I don't think they reply to an email personally. Sure. I don't. I mean, but you don't get what you don't ask for. That's true. So you never know until you, you ask, know. Right? <laughs> throw you know what at the wall, see what sticks. But lose, I probably wouldn't go after first. Okay. But Dobbins, Dobbins is a good company, and I think that if you were to write Dobbins and explain, there's a few things you need to cover. You need to you need to do an introduction about yourself, your fishing background, where you are now. Okay where you see yourself going in the next 12 to 24 months sure, and how you can help the company out. Whether it be, I can promote your product this way, this way, this way. I can provide you with short form content okay. um, X amount times a month. Um, you got to be able to sell without directly selling. Okay. And there's a few guys that are very good at it and make a healthy living doing it. Yeah. That are just phenomenal at doing it. They don't have to even mention the product. They're just so iconic in their field that they just organically sell yep. and they make a lot of commissions just through product of, placement or whatever product it is, right? placement yep. using the product catching fish on the product things like that but the biggest thing with sponsorships is you don't want to hop around right so i mean you own a business i've owned businesses in the past when I go to hire somebody and I see a resume, it's like, okay, well, this person hops jobs every six months. So why would I hire this guy having to pay all the HR fees, having to pay the onboarding fees? Yep. 
when I know that I'm going to have to do the same situation in six months. Yeah, that makes sense. So if you're going to get a sponsorship, it needs to be somebody that you're committed to 100%. Right. Okay. And you that need to sense. stay with them in the long run, right? Got it. Yep. And another thing is you got to set your expectations super low. Yeah. So if you're going to get a sponsorship, let's say Dobbins, I mean, my expectation would be that they would give you some sort of discount code. They might give, for your first year at least, they might give you 30% off. I don't know. I'm just throwing a number out. 30% off rods mm -hmm. and whatever else they manufacture, clothing, et cetera, et cetera. And then after your one year, then you could have a talk. Okay. You can say, hey, look, how do, you, how do you feel I did for you as a company? Did I hold up my end of the bargain? Mm -hmm. I always like to under promise and over deliver. Yep, I love that idea. You know, so I don't talk a bunch of BS. If I can't deliver it, I'm not going to say I can do it because the last thing I want to do is burn bridges. And everybody in fishing knows everybody in fishing. All these companies, they're under certain umbrellas with multiple companies that all use the same manufacturers. They all talk to each other. It's very tight knit. Yeah. So going back to what I said, if you hop around, they're going to find out. But going into it, you're going to get a discount code more than likely. Is it worth it to you? If you like the product, it is. If okay. you don't like the product and you're just trying to get a sticker on your boat or your kayak, it might not be worth it for you. Yeah. You got to be in it for the right reasons. So if let's say I do that, I get the product 30% off and I'm buying the products and I'm using them, talking about them. Okay. How do I make it worthwhile to them? How do they know that I'm doing a good job? How do they know? How do they know that I'm helping them sell rods and reels? What do I do? You ever see the show Big Brother? I have not. They see everything. So um, a lot of these companies will use marketing agencies and social media agencies. So what I do is I make it a point and it, it takes a minute, but you got to be very self-conscious about it. And a lot of times I'll, I'll do it on my, on my smartphone is there's certain baits for certain companies that sponsor me that I love. And I know I can go out to anybody of water and catch fish on. Sure. So I tend to focus on those, you know, my confidence baits. Okay. So with winter coming up, for example, there are, I can think of maybe 10 baits off the top of my head where I know I can catch some good sized fish on them, you know, whether it be smallmouth or spotted bass, cause that's the time of season I like to catch those fish. Okay. So if I catch a big spotted bass and maybe my GoPro wasn't running or something happened, as soon as I net that fish, I grab my phone, I hold it, you know, nine by 16 or whatever the aspect ratio is for an Instagram reel yep, or yep. a TikTok, and I start filming. Because the biggest thing for these brands is you wanna see their bait in that fish's mouth. Yeah, okay. And, and you wanna see that nice fish release. All right. So I try to do that a couple times a month with various baits, and the exposure then comes onto you because when they catch onto that, they will then repost your reel and you will then gain either subscribers or followers on Instagram from them showing your stuff because odds are they're gonna have substantially more followers than you have. Right, okay. So you're gonna then gain exposure from that. Cool. And then you are sense. doing your part for the company and they remember that stuff. So if they see you catching all these fish on this one bait and you shoot them an email and say, hey man, I'm killing it with this bait. I just ran out. Odds are pretty high that they're gonna send you a big gift basket for free just because you're doing your part and you're over delivering on your under promise. Okay. And that's how you get with the company. Makes um, sense. But communication, I mean, if you went to lose, do you think you'd have the same communication line as you would with Dobbins? I think not. No, yeah. I think not. Lose is everywhere. I mean, they're international, baby you're not gonna have the same line of communication. So that's another aspect you need to look at when you're looking for a sponsor is, are they gonna help me grow? Is there room to grow within this company? And also maybe is there room for that company to grow, right? Because what if sure. they turn into the next lose and you're their top guy, right? Then there's more You will never be their top guy. There's always gonna be somebody better than you. <laughs> there's always gonna be somebody willing to do something that you're not willing to do. That's just, the, that's the nature of things, yeah, right? Yeah, I suppose you're right. There's, there's always going to be a guy that's willing to fish 
seven days a week. I mean, I have kids, you have kids. That's we right. have we have limitations on what we can do as far as obligations go. Yes, sir. So, no, we will never be a top guy, but we can definitely be a, a high value contributor. Sure. We can definitely be a major asset to any company given the over promise under deliver, but you definitely need to pick your sponsorships strategically to you and where you are in your fishing and where you see yourself going. Realistically, I mean, everybody wants to be up here, but if you're, if you're right here, you gotta set expectations. So what I like to do is go through Q1 through Q4, set expectations for yourself that okay. are manageable. Yeah. That are manageable. So if you're on Instagram, for example, and you have 1,500 followers at Q1 beginning, Okay, well, I know by the end of Q1 going into Q2, I can probably gain 500 followers. I can get that number up to 2,000 because social reach is a big thing for, you know, sponsors. Okay. It's cheaper to use a guy like you and me than to hire a marketing agency to right. do all this stuff. It's substantially cheaper. It costs them virtually nothing. A couple packs of baits to keep you happy. Yeah, that's a good point versus five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 pay a marketing agency, it, it right? It really, yeah. it really is a small investment on their part. So I think the biggest thing is picking brands that fit you in brands that you personally use and have used for a long time that maybe aren't the biggest. I wouldn't say go after like Berkeley or sure. Lose or you know some of these bigger brands. But if you want to try, try because you don't get what you don't ask for at the end of the day. And if they say no, you know, respectfully, thank you. I appreciate your time. You're going to receive a resume and an email from me next year. Maybe next year is my year. Yeah. Maybe next year I am big enough to represent your brand and you will feel differently about the situation. Yeah, or maybe they see, you know, say see me winning a tournament or something like that and they, or maybe and they, they remember or they find or that maybe email. They see, <laughs> or maybe they see you with a different brand killing it making content. Or maybe you have a piece of content that goes viral and you just blow up from. Right. And they say, I wonder if this guy can do that again. And then you do do it again. Okay. It's all yeah. about selling product at the end of the day and brand exposure. So for all those guys out there that have asked me or are thinking of asking me, how do you get your sponsors? I mean, I have a handful of sponsors. And honestly, it's... The business side of it, it's not fishing skill related. A lot of these brands, yes, it looks good if you're winning tournaments, but it's brand exposure. It's what you can do to this brand. It's helping them, you know, design baits. It's consulting. Maybe you have a business mind. Maybe you have a business degree. You know, maybe you think differently than the average guy. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to be Kevin Van Dam to kill it in fishing. Yeah. You just have to offer something to these companies that other people can't offer. Because there's a lot of guys that can go out there and shoot emails and repost on their stories what every company is posting. That doesn't mean anything. Correct. Yeah. They don't care if you're reposting their stuff to your 500 followers. That really means nothing. Friends and family, I mean, how many of your friends and family care about, you know, whatever brand's new lure? They yeah. don't care. So you got to have the business sense. And if you have it, you have it. If you don't, I suggest learning it. But it's all about what you have to bring to the table for them because it has to be a mutually beneficial relationship between you and the sponsor that you're going after. Okay. Right? Yeah. So having known that, would you re-examine some of the brands that you use? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably the, where I would start is putting a lot of thought into what brands I'm currently using, what baits I'm using. Or what are, and your, maybe need, find, what are your needs, right? Sure. And also maybe look for more consistency across my rods and reels. Right so, now, I just have a big mix of everything. Sure. Um, but another thing I was kind of wondering is, as someone who doesn't have any sponsors starting out, would it add any value to your brand as a person, as a fisherman, to start putting out product placement things and mentioning brands, mentioning baits while you're fishing, even if you're not sponsored, just to show potential sponsors that, hey, maybe this guy's doing a good job at talking about these products. 
maybe he would be a good fit for our brand. So to reiterate, you have no sponsors, but you're making reels for products that you use personally. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So then you could show them that and say, hey, this is how I Well, not just that, but if, if you have a following of any size, yes, that would be a great idea because your following would then see, hey, this guy's killing it with this crank or this guy's killing it with this lipless or jerk bait. Sure. I'm going to go buy some of those. And then, I mean, if the stuff that you're using isn't a brand that's way above your caliber, then yes, you have a shot. But even if they are way above your caliber, if you're killing it with these reels, not reels, but you know, short form, yeah, yeah, short sure. form content, yep, your content, then you have a very good shot of getting these brands. Okay. Even Got if it. it's a, even if it's a brand like Six Sense or you know any of these brands, if you're killing it with your reels, short form you're gonna have a very good shot. Okay. I mean, I know guys that are sponsored by Sixth Sense that are absolutely nobodies, but they can make short form content like you wouldn't believe. They just, they think different. I mean, I'm business savvy, you're business savvy. I'm not the best at editing. I'm not the most creative fella in the world. Sure. But I know what companies wanna hear. I know what their expectations are. Even, even before I got into tournament fishing, I made a plan. I, I had a big whiteboard. I had a Q1 through Q4. I set expectations, realistic expectations to meet. And for the most part, I would say I hit about 85% of them. Wow. But there are times of the year where it does, I mean, you do have lulls. It's, you know, it's very much a roller coaster and it takes, it's a longevity game. Yeah. It's a longevity game. So like I said previously, you get these sponsors, you do good by these sponsors. You stay in contact with these sponsors. Maybe even get a cell phone number. I always ask for a cell phone number, you know, whether it be the owner or uh, the second man or the decision maker. Because you yeah. always want to get your thing to the decision maker. Sure, yeah. Makes so sense. whoever is in charge of the pro staff, whoever is a VP, whoever owns the company. Yep. I mean, this is all public knowledge for the most part. You can do a little research and you can get the email address on your own. And how I would title it is, you know, your full name, sponsorship slash mutually beneficial partnership, and then in bold, not spam. Please open. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do. I, I don't fill out applications because applications are gonna go into a bundle. I send out direct emails to the decision makers, okay. and they're gonna say, yes, I think you're a good fit, or now is not the right time, please try again later. Okay, so and you're basically bringing it back to sales 101 of get your proposition in front of the decision maker. Yes. And let them make a decision. Yes, because okay. everybody is just gonna fill out the little application on the website, but if you go the extra mile and you send out a personal email to the person that needs to see it, mm -hmm. you're basically skipping ahead in line. Gosh, okay, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And the best time of year to do all this is, I would say, September through the end or the very beginning of November because that's when they start putting their stuff together for 2024 okay. and putting their little gift baskets together to send out as tax write-offs. Mm -hmm. You know? That's the best time of year to do it. So, oh with that being said, do you have any more questions for me? So, I think I, think I kind of got it from here. It's basically step one is going to be figuring out what kind of products I like, what kind of brands I like, and what I want to focus on as far as the different products and brands I want to be a part of. Correct. Then I start focusing what I have on that and fishing with those products and also mentioning them as I'm using them. Catch a fish on this bait. Say, hey, this is the bait I used. Start posting these reels. Stand out. Yeah, stand out, exactly. And start showing that, hey, I, ain't, I am a good ambassador for any company I choose to work with. And I can put these views out and let people see what I have and what I'm offering. So then from there, it's gonna be actually reaching out to these companies and hopefully get noticed. You can reach out to them before you do all this stuff too. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Cause I mean, the worst they're gonna say is no. Try again That's next true. Year. And then maybe you don't have to pay for any of the stuff up front, which is even better, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say 90% chance you're gonna get a discount code. With well, like, with don't the, have to with pay the, as much. Yes. If anything helps, you'll right? save You'll save a few bucks here and there, but, yeah. and then year two, 
you might start receiving free product. Year three, you might receive more free products. Yeah. It all depends on where you are going into it as far as your social media reach, how articulate you are, what you can bring to the table for them as far as short form content, brand exposure, offer to do maybe trade shows in your state, okay. run their booth. Yeah. Um, maybe go to smaller companies that are within your state that you can personally visit and say, hey, I'm Brad. You yeah. know, you just sponsored me. I want to check out where the magic happens. Okay. You know, I know P-Line is out of Brisbane mm -hmm. by San Francisco. That's very local. That would be a brand that I would start with. They also own First Gen. Oh, got it. Nice. And they make a ton of baits. So that's somebody that I would, I would look into. I would look into California companies right off the bat. AFCO. They're out of Santa Barbara or Southern California, but okay. they might be a little too out of your caliber right now. Easy. I'm just, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, just being, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I know. But but I would start off with brands that are that are local. There's a bunch of Bass Union out of Orville. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you know he's killing it with his business model. He's just he's doing things and he has great products. Um, there's there's a lot of California companies that maybe you are unfamiliar with yet and that you should buy some of their stuff and you know try it out make sure you like it sure because like i said the last thing you want to do is get a sponsor represent them badly and leave them burn that bridge because a lot of these companies are under an umbrella where they'll have their company and they'll have a bunch of dbas doing business as yeah. and they will have four or five different companies under that one company and all these companies at icasts don't think they don't talk to each other. Don't think they don't text on a daily basis. You know, 13, Rapala, Six Sense, all these companies super intertwined. They, they talk. Okay. So you burn one bridge. You burn a lot of bridges. Right. So that makes sense. So if you pick up a sponsor and they're a well-known sponsor, you better be in it for the long haul. Or yeah. you better plan your exit strategy very, very well to where you're maintaining a friendship at least. Fair enough. Because at, at a non-pro level, everyone is expendable. Everyone is expendable. There's always somebody that's willing to do more than you because A, they don't have kids. B, they are single and not married. They don't have the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're 18, 19, 20 years old, fresh out of high school or college, you know, in between jobs, hitting those pawns every day, making videos. I mean, you can't buy time. Nope. And some people have more of it than others. I only have so many days a week to fish. You only have so many days a week to fish. Yep. So that's where I would start. Cool. All right. Well, I really appreciate your help and your advice. I guess I got to hit the ground and you just make it you, happen here man you hit the ground running you hit the ground <laughs> running. i would say just shoot out emails because you don't get what you don't ask for right you really don't the All worst right. they're going to say is no take it on the chin move on to the next one yeah i would say make a list of your favorite companies and then maybe label them you know one through three with one being the biggest box brand and three being the the smallest business mm -hmm. sorry for the smaller guys work your way up to the bigger guys but make sure your brands don't conflict. Make sure they don't yeah. make the same products. Because if you start getting sponsorships that conflict, it's no good for you. It's no good for them. Yeah, you're stuck in the middle, and they either both they both want what they want. The last thing know. the last thing they want to see is you making reels of a soft plastic that is a competitor of theirs. Mm -hmm. So you can get yourself in a very sticky situation very quickly. That's like, for example, that's like. Um, Rod Glove, okay, mm -hmm. is owned by, what is it, VXR. Okay. Um, so they DBA doing business as Rod Glove, which are the neoprene rod sleeves. But they also DBA as Exxon, which uh, they make soft okay. plastics. Yeah. And, I mean, their number one guy is Brandon Polinick. He mm -hmm. got AOI the other year, you know, all sure. this. But... It would be a conflict of interest for you to go out and get another soft plastic. Like if you were to get sponsored by Berkeley and you start, you know, oh, the general this, the little general on Ned Heads, they would not find that cute. Right. They would not be happy with that. They'd probably drop you. Mm -hmm. um, especially if your content was top tier and you were getting 
a good amount of views. Yeah. So a conflict of interest is a big thing. So if you're going to stick to something, stick to something like me. I have the same company for my rods, my reels, a lot of my hard baits, um, soft plastics. I keep pretty much to one company. I do kind of dabble in a couple of different things, but I don't promote them. But I do use other soft plastics. Sure. And I have clothing brand sponsors that I'm pretty loyal with. Um, I have two of them, one for wet weather gear and sun shirts, one for casual wear. Um, I have a shoe, a shoe brand. Um, I have a sunglass sponsor. I have what I need. You know, yeah. I'm not out there every, every season trying to get, oh, I need five sponsors to look cool. That's not, that's not my business model. Sure. I want brands that align with what I, what I do, where I'm going and where I am currently. Yeah. And I plan on keeping these brands because I have a good line of communication. So communication is probably the biggest thing for me. If I can't text you, I can't email you and you can't get back to me in 48 hours. There's a disconnect. Yeah. There's a disconnect. Whether you don't care about me and your your pro staff team or your ambassador team or there's a there's a disconnect. And I, I want to be heard, you know, if I'm paying a discounted rate for your products and I'm doing all this legwork, I want to be heard. Yeah, so communicate to me. <laughs> communi at least get at least get back to me. So yeah. communication is probably my biggest thing when I look for a sponsor is how they are interacting with me. If they reply to me with an email and they schedule a phone call and they'll sit there and BS with me for an hour, hour and a half and ask me personal questions, then I know, hey, you know what? I'm sold. Yeah. I want to work with these people. I want to work with you. Yeah. You know, maybe your product isn't top tier, but I still want to work with you because I like you as a person. And I think the people connection to me is more important than the product connection because products can always get better. Yeah. I mean, you could always... in, in Stuff is always coming out every year. It gets better and better and better. It's all about people and people and people. It's, it's sales 101, like you said. Exactly, yeah. So that's kind of where I stand with my sponsorships, how I get my sponsorships, how I maintain them, obtain them. And I'd recommend the same for you, my friend. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your help. I appreciate you having me over here today. Yeah, no problem. But you know what? Throw at the wall and see, see what, what sticks. All right. But make sure you can represent it. Make sure you can under-promise, over-deliver, and I think you'll be okay. Awesome. Guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below um, regarding sponsorships or anything else. If you want to privately message me about sponsorships, you can uh, hit me up on Instagram. It's at Anthony Nordstrom Fishing, or you can shoot me an email I will put my email in the description of this video. I try to get back to everybody as long as it's not a nonsense email. I try to get back to everybody. Give me a day or two, but for the most part, I get back to everybody. Thanks, guys.